What's up everybody? Today's Swift tutorial is all about how I build my UI using a combination of storyboard and code in a term I'm kind of calling skeletal storyboards. It's not like an official term, but it looks like this. So my storyboards, super, super basic. Like it looks like just a, a default app, nothing special. However, when you run the code, it looks like this and you know, the UI looks styled and, and nice. If you think this is nice. Now I found this hybrid approach to work for me and I wanna really, really stress for me, it's a personal thing. If you love doing everything in code and you wanna write your whole UI in code, great, cool, that works fine. If you're a visual person, you love doing storyboards, cool, as long as you do them right. Cool, fine, great. This is not a debate on storyboard versus code. In fact, it's kind of like merging the two together. Like this is my hybrid approach. So uh, now you've seen what it looks like, let's talk about how I build it. As always, let's start with a quick run through of the starter project so you have some context. Uh, I have done a little bit of code on the side. Uh, that way, you know, this tutorial is focused on the skeletal storyboards and not other stuff. So here, basically, I just have a blank view controller, nothing to it, it's literally a blank view controller. Uh, but go, if we go through the files here, I do have a constants file, which this just basically designates a color and then the font I'm gonna use, just stylistic stuff, not a big deal. I do have a base view controller. Uh, a lot of my projects tend to have a base view controller because uh, a lot of the screens look very similar. So all the similar stuff that is the same across you know, all or most screens, I usually create a base view controller for. In this simple tutorial case, it's just the background color, but this fi uh, file can grow. I do have SA button, and by the way, SA is just Sean Allen. Typical naming convention is like a two letter, like if it was Facebook, it would be like FB button or something like that. Uh, so that's why it's SA. But this is just a basic button. You can see I do my customization here uh, in code. So, uh, you know, I set the title color, background color, the font, and then the corner radius uh, of the button. So again, the premise of this skeletal storyboard is you do all your stylization of the views in code. However, you still lay out your screen and do the auto layout and constraints on the storyboard. And the reason I enjoy this technique is because it takes all that auto layout constraint code and you know you don't see that in your code, doesn't clutter up your code. And then all the stylization of the views you know, are done in the custom classes. So it keeps the view controllers really neat and clean. And again, this isn't like some official way to do things. This is just the hybrid approach that I've kind of stumbled across that I, I really enjoy and I really like. Uh, so I just wanna stress that this is just my opinion. I'm not telling you this is how you have to do it. Give it a try, let me know if you like it in the comments. Uh, but anyway, just more stylization of the UI elements. Uh, again, my SA auth text field because what we're building is kind of a login screen here. So again, this is just basic, you know, setting up uh, a text view and code. And I will link the source code in the description so you can download this if you want. If you are curious about how I style, you know, text fields and all this stuff, uh, but that's not what this tutorial is about. I don't wanna get sidetracked there. So anyway, as you can see, I do have all my views in code. So now all we're going to do is create this login screen uh, via storyboard. And again, I understand this example I'm about to build is super, super simple. It's just text fields and a button, but it does illustrate the idea and how I do stuff. Uh, obviously views can get more complex, but the idea pretty much remains the same. Uh, the screen would have to get super, super dynamic for me to just go full, you know, all code. And that does happen. But as long as the screen is relatively simple and straightforward, I definitely use this approach. So let's get to it. Uh, here we are in Xcode 10. So we do our command shift L to pull up our object library. Let's go ahead and get a uh, text field, drag that onto here. And um, so now we're gonna set our constraints. And just a little quick rule of thumb about constraints. If you're finding yourself adding more than four constraints to a single object, uh, you're probably doing it wrong. So again, I don't really care too much how this looks. We're just gonna do 100 from the top, uh, you know, 30, 30. I never constrain the margins. I don't know why, whatever. Uh, and then we'll just give it a height of, you know, 50 whatever. So there's my text field. And I, the first thing I need to do, well, actually, let's back up a little bit. I forgot to do this. My view controller right now doesn't have a class. So you saw I wrote this SA base view controller, which again, is just a background color, no big deal. Um, but I want to make my view controller an SA view controller. So I get uh, that background color. There you go. Now I'm going to get that. Now I have my text field, uh, give myself a little placeholder text here. Placeholder text just says uh, username, sure. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hold option, drag down to copy this text field as well. Now when I do that, if I click my constraints over here, um, you'll see I still got the height constraint that stuck with it, but I need to do the location relative to the username text field. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, first of all, let's get the placeholder. We don't want username, this is going to be uh, password, hit enter. 
And uh, let's go ahead and give this again 30 and 30, no strain to margins, 30 and 30, and then, you know, whatever, 30 from the top. Give it some, some symmetry there. Cool, now those are in place. Uh, the key thing here though, now these are just blank text fields. You can see how they look. They look pretty boring and basic. Uh, as I did with the view controller, I need to go ahead and make this an uh, SA auth text field. And again, it's an auth text field because it's like authorization. Um, this is a login screen. Uh, I do that because, you know, sometimes you may have different text fields, different types of text fields throughout your app. Uh, so anyway, cool, SA auth text field, that is that. Go ahead and make the password one, that as well, SA auth text field. And while I'm here uh, in the uh, property here, you wanna click secure text entry. Uh, that way when you're typing your password, you get the little dots. There are a lot more uh, text field customizations you can do, uh, you know, with like, I usually, for passwords, you don't want it to autocorrect stuff. I'm not gonna mess with that all now, but if you weren't familiar with how you customize your the options on your text field, it's this right here, uh, and you can do it in code as well. A little side tip. So let's go ahead and do Command Shift L, pull up a button here, and drag that onto here. Again, go ahead and constrain it. And oh, I don't have it. Go ahead and constrain it. Let's go ahead and give it a uh, width of 260. And again, I'm not terribly concerned with you know proper constraints right now. That's not the point of the tutorial. So height and width 260, and then I'll just give it you know we'll say 120 from the bottom, not constrained to margin. Uh, I don't really care if it's near the safe area or not because it's 120 pixels up, whatever. And hit add three constraints, cool. And then I forgot to horizontally center in container. There we go, we have our basic setup. Now if I set my title of the button, let's go ahead and set it to login. And then just like with the text fields, I go ahead and make this an SA button. And again, if, if you're not familiar, you, you kind of lost track here. This SA button and SA text field, uh, this is what I created uh, in code over here. There's an SA text, auth text field. This is the SA button. And then all the stylization is done in code. And uh, yeah, so back to the main storyboard. Now I have my screen. And this is what my uh, typical storyboards look like. Like if you looked at this storyboard right now, you'd be like, that's just, nobody put any styling into the app. Like that looks stupid. But this is what all my storyboards look like. And I, I like the, again, the benefits to this that I like are one, the storyboards load super fast. I still get to see like how the screen is structured and, and shaped, but even though it's not stylized. Uh, so again, the storyboards load fast and it keeps all my constraint and my UI logic out of the view controller. Uh, now I know there are other ways to do this. Um, a lot of people will make a an extension on their view controller and they'll call it like, you know, you control view controller plus interface and they'll do all their interface stuff in that extension. That is another way to do it. Um, I just prefer it this way. Again, there's many, many ways to do UI. This isn't like, this is the best way to do it. Just what I like to do. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So again, what I see on my storyboard, you're looking at, and it's very lightweight. When I run it in the simulator, pull it up here <laughs> and I messed up. I don't have the uh, entry set so again we all make these silly silly mistakes so is initial view controller you need that for every storyboard uh go ahead and run it again bring up my simulator and there you go so you see what the storyboard uh looks like on the right however you see a more stylized version of the uh, actual app on the left now again these are just simple right just rounded corners little opacity change the font uh, you know, you could add drop shadows or whatever, but uh, you can extrapolate where you can make more complex UI doing it all in code, like doing all the stylization. And then when you run it, you, you, you know, you get this stylized. Now you'll notice I don't even have a view controller file. Like I have my base view controller uh, that is this, but that's just the background color. Like I don't even have a view controller file hooked up to my view controller and I'm getting this stylized screen that you see here. So again, this is why I like this approach. It just separates everything out of the view controller to keep the view controller nice and clean. And uh, here you go. So again, I know this is a super simple example, but hopefully you guys get the idea and you can start experimenting on your own with this. Uh, and again, this this isn't like an official method. I just kind of stumbled across it and found this hybrid approach between doing it in code and doing it in storyboard. And uh, it's a way to keep your view controllers clean. Let me know what you think of it. I'd love to hear you guys try it out. Uh, let me know if you think it sucks, it's stupid, or uh, you know if you're kind of liking it. Uh, so that's it. That's just a basic uh, example of how I do my UI. As you saw on the screen, that's a very basic screen. Obviously, UI can get much more complicated than that, but this approach has still worked for me. Uh, so if you have any questions about how this can work, leave a comment. I'm happy to discuss it. Uh, if you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.